Hey, what's up? Welcome to another video content from Aspie with Attitude. If you're seeing this for the very first time, my name is David. I am from Melbourne, Australia. Have a speech difficulty, speech impairment, a speech impairment. I'm autistic, have a speaker syndrome, and that's why I call myself an Aspie. And now that I'm actually done with the fidget spinner, so I'd just like to also just tighten myself up a bit too. Yeah, so you can see that I'm actually wearing a Chicago Bulls t-shirt with my North Carolina pants. Well, anyway, it's all to do with Michael Jordan here, one of the legendary basketballers ever in the basketball scene. So, like, it's time to start on this autistic life hack video content. Because, going back to when we were once upon a time, as young as 24 months old, living on an autism spectrum, we once engaged in a repeat activity, which is lying up objects, whether it's our toys or any other safe objects, on the floor or along the table, anywhere, just lining them up. And those most likely had been one of the early signs that we were autistic. Well, first off, I just wouldn't mind skiing through a bit of a doom and gloom, discussing ABA providers, which I mean applied behavioural assessment providers, could encourage parents of autistic children use such early interventions like stopping their autistic child from lining up objects. Well, this act of early intervention such as dismantling objects that are lined up, it is an incorrect approach to dealing with this situation. And this can be a meltdown trigger, which provokes the meltdown action once this form of repeat behaviour is all stopped in its tracks. Any ABA providers who suggest intervention are totally wrong. Teaching the parents to turn into beach bullies who want to go around stopping on top of sand castles in front of the children who are building these castles. And that's what these parents would become if they were to dismantle any objects that are being lined up that serves as a meltdown trigger. And this act of repeat behaviour is very harmless and it is not dangerous. If an autistic child is going to be lying up his or her toys on the floor, on the table, anywhere in the house, it will not burn the house down once it comes to lying up toys or any safe objects. And that's why ABO providers get no support from Aspie with Attitude. Lying up objects does serve a purpose, especially for an autistic individual in their early childhood phase. This phase of lining up toys will evolve into a handful of life skills before reaching adolescent and then into adulthood. Some repeated behaviours like lining up toys are likely to nurture into basic skills for successful careers once reaching adulthood. This practice of lining up toys are expected to exercise their motor skills that is most needed once they reach their adulthoods, especially when they need to become more independent someday in the future when they become adults. Lining up toys may exercise the mind of an autistic individual in their early childhood phase. I'm talking about somewhere maybe as young as 12 months up to 36 months old to have basic understanding in organisation and motor skills, something that an adult will need to understand if a child was to one day make into adulthood. Repeating behaviour of lying up toys works as a life skill for an individual on the autism spectrum who is within their early childhood phase. This will eventually evolve into motor skills and organisation that is all required and that's the positivity why 
any autistic individuals in their early childhood phase have the urge to light up toys, to understand motor skills and organisation. Well, no, speaking of which though, yeah, I think I'm gonna have a bit of fun and just have a bit of exercise once I head out into the hallway. Yeah, just come with me, because I'm about to show you just different various ways you can actually line up toys. Yeah, come on, come along. For this example, what I'd actually like to show you is a way I've lined up the toys just in a formation. Just like for example, now I've actually already got this big space shuttle behind and I've actually got two same kind of spacecrafts. So like I can go a bit closer just to quickly show you how they all each look the same. So like what I've done in this example is I just put them kind of just aside there and I'm about to show you the differences and like how this actually a smaller one yeah it just looks so different well anyway I'm glad to be showing off my Lego like this just an example about how autistic individuals like to kind of line up objects whether it's children, teenagers, adults or elderly who's on the autism spectrum and maybe perhaps even with children sometimes, you know how you've got a sort of like a flying object in that formation? Perhaps, maybe, they could actually put these in the formation. Yeah, I'll come a bit closer to show you what I mean. Like, they're not spacecrafts at all. This just happens to be just propeller planes. And just maybe, I can have the propeller planes flying alongside the space shuttle. Oh, which actually makes it a bit more triangular. And also to never forget, I've actually hidden the flying saucer. So like all oh, my point of flying saucer in the middle there. Yeah, sometimes an individual who's autistic might like to set up this triangular formation for hours. Oh, without changing it. It's just to sort of like compare these three white spaceships or space shuttles, I should say, how you got a big one and how this one looks different. And also the difference between these flying objects. That's what I'm observing here. Sometimes most autistic individuals don't even know why they're doing it at all. My next example that I've actually done is like you can just notice it's all the way down the hallway and actually formed a bit of like a roadblock, just random Lego cars. Well, anyway, they didn't have to be perfect, like even though I've got two cop cars and a pizza delivery van, just sort of like creating a bit of a speed hub or I don't know what to describe it. Well, it's just always gets so random and it's just hard for me to interpret what I've done, like how they're all just sort of like facing each other, just like if I'm actually going to be pushing all cars down the hallway. Well, what I've done is like, you can just see, check out all colours, and what I can actually do is, what I'm actually showing you is, I'm just getting all red cars there. Yeah, probably I'll put a yellow truck, or maybe the pink car should actually go here. So anyway, this is just so cool what I'm doing there. And also a plus, like, I'll probably get all the blue cars. Yeah, and also a plus I've got a black. Yeah, and also this is just another way that I could be actually lining up all these Lego cars that I have here. So for this example, I just want to sort of stick with the fact how it's almost like blocking a hallway passage, which is actually pretty common for even especially autistic children at play and I can actually all have this nicely lined up 
And it's just almost like you just push a piece of delivery van away. And I can push that green car away. And, well, even a cop car. And just crash in the back of the pizza delivery truck. So I didn't get this on camera. So I'll just run back and actually just collect what I mean. Like, yeah, here's a yellow pizza delivery van. Yeah, one of my favorite Lego kids there. <laughs> and also, me and my best mate, Matt, just in a green convertible. And just kind of appears that I've actually found something's been broken off after when it plowed in the back of a pizza van. So anyway, here we go. Yep, fix that. I wouldn't mind actually returning back to where I came from originally. Sometimes if it's just not enough, I can always fix it a bit. And now I have a Lego ice cream truck here. So what I'm gonna do this Lego ice cream truck then. And I'm just gonna walk myself back to it. Okay, careful I don't accidentally kick it. Otherwise, I wreck it. You know, I did. Like how cool it would be to kick all the Lego cars in my Air Max 90s. Well, it sound like a typically bullish kind of sibling do do that to autistic kid if they're lying out toys on the floor. Well, you can just see this is all sequence. This is all lined up. And still, I can't even figure out why I'm doing this. This is a challenge explaining about lying up toys here. I'm Aspie with Attitude. For the next example, actually I've decided to show you another way how I've actually lined up the cars, still blocking the hallway. What I've done this time is, I did not worry about the colour. The sequence behind it is, this is actually going for the largest Lego vehicle to the smallest, enough just to block a whole entire width of this hallway. Well, with children, like, they could be sitting at this for hours. Well, since I'm an adult, yeah, it's just a chance to explain different quirky ways how an autistic individual could be lining up their toys. So like while I'm on the floor, there's something I want to do for this example. Well maybe if I want to line up more of these Lego cars and I can actually just grab the smallest one which is that yellow car which I want to show you quickly. Yeah look at how small that is. Yep. And I'll Glad I've got a monitor to make sure that the camera's not getting out of focus here. So, where am I going to put this down? Maybe I could just start from the centre. I'll start up there so you can see what I'm actually doing here. It's just going to really actually line up the whole entire way with toys. So anyway, yeah, this gets fun to do. I'm gonna go by a source portion. I'm not gonna let the color matter in this example. So that's what most children on the autism spectrum love to do is with their Lego cars is just to do all this, just like if there's a bit of a traffic jam. And maybe I'll push this one up. Yeah, but it's a bit of a wide vehicle. Yeah, you know, it's going all the way up to the hallway. Like, I just don't want to sort of make this a long video of me lining up the Lego cars pretty much in the hallway. You know, I've always wanted to make a video like this. Anyway, kept the opportunity to do this. And just one more. Not so. 
That's all the cars I'm going to actually show you. Ah, oh, yep. Yeah. And I can keep going up to this wall if I wanted to, but I might do this in this example, just showing you how toys are lined up. The sequence I've chose this don't buy size portions, or if I wanted to, I can always even switch over and just go by the colour sequence. Which is probably going to be a bit of a waste of time here. So who cares? This is just fun enjoying being able to do this. So the ice cream truck got to go there now, sun, it's all going white. I've got to put a white police car. Yeah, cool. And also, all the blue cars coming along there. More of these blue cars, more of that. challenges you can always roll them back that's a cool thing about these Lego cars that I'm actually using this in this example now hopefully to put a small one out front so you can actually see it but I might be playing with zoom at all well if this is this all kind of like random vehicles that I'm putting in line there anyway yep she lost her telescope This is all part of my safari kit here. So I don't know how it's all going to turn out, just seeing how good all the colours. Well, this is just a single file going down the hallway. That's what I wanted to show off for this example. Now what I exactly want to do for my final example is something like creative. What well, actually did was well the cars because like don't know which way to go. But it's just actually so confusing like how I did everything in a spiral. So anyway, it looks like the cars are meant to go this way and that way. So this is just all about wanting to get it right. Well it's just kind of you're just staring at this trying to see every details in each and every cast. Well actually it's a bit more compact than actually <laughs> having it all lined up like before. I was blocking the hallway and how I had all cars lined up there. So all I've done is dip a spiral. Well I'm not looking for the golden ratio for those who understand what a golden ratio is. So I don't want to explain it. So it's actually like the circular pattern here. It looks like all the traffic's actually going in one direction in the spiral. Kind of actually observing a bit of tension in its formation. Yeah, this is just some ideas like, I remember doing this with Matchbox cars when I was 11 years old. Something I haven't done in years. Oh, which is actually just using my creativity to see what I can do in regards to lining up toys for this video. But I think I've shown you enough example. So that's actually just the whole point of the video. Just discussing different quirky ways how an autistic individual could actually be lining up toys. <laughs> well anyway, I just put that was just cool trying to make sense out of lining up my Lego collection along the hallway. Yeah, just trying to come up with all sorts of creative ways that could be lining up toys. And at a time when I was actually making these videos in the hallway, I felt this still had no meaning and couldn't understand why. Anyways, since now I have that on YouTube, this was just an exercise from an autistic adult Lego fan trying to line up the Lego cars and those Lego space shuttles and aeroplanes on the floor in the hallway. So like, if you think this actually had anything or any meaning, I would please 
like to ask you to tell me in the comments down below if you think there was any meaning of actually doing this. Even as an adult Lego collector, I had been lining up my Lego cars in front of my prize Lego modular sets to add life into this small Lego town. Since I've spent 900 Australian dollars on these Lego buildings that you see, now it's just gone up in value to like $2,000 since after I built those Lego buildings. Before I sign off from this upload from Aspie of Attitude, if you'd like to show more support to this channel, all I ask for you to do is please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Aspie of Attitude. And there's even more you can do by liking, sharing this video content around. Since it will actually help to increase the algorithm. That's all I ask for in terms of support. And also, please don't forget to ring this notification bell to keep up to date with Aspie with Attitude. And if you've been watching this for the first time, yeah, I'm just gonna actually do what I always do. I've been doing this since episode 32. So this is the biggest big nose trick. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening to Aspie with Attitude. Peace and respect, and see you next time.